I just threw myself on my knees and just said, you need to tell me what I'm going to do. I can't, I can't do it on my own. I need, I need help. You need to tell me today what to do, otherwise I won't be here next week. I'm going to kill myself. Uh, my name is Ricky the Hit Manhattan. I'm from Manchester and I was um, four-time champion of the world. Won world titles that like welterweight and welterweight. And um, through my um, services to, to boxing and sport, I was able to get an MBE. One of the proudest things I've got. Over the last year, I've opened up and spoken about um, all the problems that I've um, been having. Back in the day, when I was in a in, when I was in a really really bad place, I just used to sit in the house, not leave the house, and I used to just dwell on things. And I think you know, the more time you give yourself, you know, to, to just just sit there and, and, and ponder, you know, I think the worse it, the worse it, it goes, you just go you go under. I think it was when I lost my first fight against Floyd Mayweather. I lost my first fight against Floyd. I thought I was going to beat him. Uh, I didn't, and I got knocked out. First time I've been knocked out. So it was very, very hard for me to swallow. So mentally, I was very, very down. <clears throat> but then I boxed at the City of Manchester Stadium, which was, I'm a big Man City fan, so to box at Man City Stadium, 55,000 below you know, was brilliant for me. So my big confidence is, is back up again. Um, then I fell out with my trainer, Billy Graham, who was my, one of my best mates as well. So, my head fell down again. Uh, and then I boxed in Las Vegas when Nolan, Nolan Liam Gallagher carried me belts in. Nolan Liam Gallagher from Oasis carried me belts in, which was a heroes of mine, another dream come true. So I was back up again. And then I got um, knocked out by Manny Pacquiao in two rounds, which ultimately meant I had to retire. Um, and then I, shortly after that, I fell out with my mum and dad. So, I, um, so my mind, you can see how my mind was going up and down and up and down and up and down. And then I was sat in my living room and I was just thinking to myself, you've got no boxing no more. You know, you can't share what you've done with your mum and dad. You can't share it with your trainer and you, 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 haven't, you haven't got a missus or wife. And you haven't got a missus anymore. I thought, what do I need to be here for? And, uh, you know, and I, and I didn't want to be here, really didn't. I think there is a little bit of a stigma, you know, around, you know, opening up. And it's for men, for men and women, but I'd probably say more men. I think sometimes it's a lack of confidence with people. Like, you know, you don't feel you can tell your mate, you don't feel you can tell your family. I most definitely didn't want to tell my family because I didn't want them worrying about me. So uh, I kept a lot of it to, to myself. I didn't want to burden them with the, the grief of me being suicidal and wanting to kill myself. My baby daughter, Millie, um, um, my, girl, my girlfriend at the time, she got pregnant with, with Millie. And I thought, come on, Rick, you know, it's not about you now, it's about the kids, get yourself together, Rick, you know. And even Millie couldn't do it, couldn't get me back on, 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 on track. I was still down, so I went and... I went and spoke to a psychiatrist in Manchester and <clears throat> just threw myself on my knees and just said, you need to tell me what I'm going to do. I can't, I can't do it on my own. I need, I need help. You need to tell me today what to do, otherwise I won't be here next week. I'm going to kill myself. And, you know, every time I went and saw him, I'd come out just like a sigh of relief. I just, you know, just it was just unbelievable where I'm thinking to because, you know, you... You, you've got, it burns you up inside, you hold it in, you hold it in, you hold it in. I need to tell someone, I need to tell someone, I need to tell someone, and you don't, because you feel you can't, and it goes worse and worse and worse and worse. So when I finally went to my psychiatrist and got it off my chest, I felt like I could start my life again. And it basically just started from there, got myself a little program in order, a little routine, you know what I mean? And, um, and that's what you've got to uh, got to do. You know what I mean? You, you, you don't be don't be um, scared to get it off your chest and tell someone. I think um, my family members and friends and friends of friends. I think I feel very very proud that they've seen me how I've turned me my life around. I'm not just acting better. I'm, I'm physically looking better. You know what I mean? My my, um, my boxers that I train are getting a better trainer. You know what I mean? My kids are getting a better father. My granddaughter's getting a better granddad, and I'm just um, I'm just in a better place all around. And I think when people um, see, you know, because the the people have seen where I, where I was a few years ago when I was suicidal, to see in me present day, 
and they hear me, t me talk and tell the story, I think it has a double, a double impact. You know, I'm going to listen to Ricky because God, you remember? Because I used to be, I used to be that big. <laughs> I used to be in the pub. I was drunk every night. I was taking loads of drugs. It, it was horrible for people to see. So I think you know when when they see the the Ricky Atten of today, and when when I'm speaking, when I'm talking about uh, it with the uh, with the charities that I do and the sportsmen's dinners and the motivational speaking I do on, on the road every week. I think um, I think I'd like to think I'm helping a lot of people, and I think that helps my own mental health. Charities such as Calm are needed now more than they've ever been. You know what I mean? Because it's a bad time for mental health, and um, people are people out there are suffering. So my job now, as as long as as long as I till I as long as I am here, I wanna I wanna help people because you know what I mean. You know, good times, you know, bad times don't last forever. You think they're gonna last forever, they don't last forever, and they won't last forever if you go and speak to someone. With a former world boxing champion who won like four world titles, and I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be a tough guy, aren't I? No, I, I couldn't do it myself, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what I did in, in the boxing ring or anything like that. I needed help, and never be, never be scared to admit that you need help. Never be scared to admit that you need help. And promise you, it's the best thing you'll ever do.